All right. Let's do it. I'm very lucky in my little corner of YouTube where I talk about books, because generally readers are really nice people. Most of my commenters, 99% of them, are kind and sweet and thoughtful and considerate and open and welcoming. A lot of them are much smarter than I am. And that's fun. I have great discussions in my comment sections all the time. And the only time I have any kind of friction in my comment section, any time that, that 1% interferes with my day, it's because they're a Murakami fan. His fans have a lot to say. They're pretty angry people. They make funny comments. So let's have a look at some of them. This first comment comes from my review of Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World, a book that I really enjoyed, but it features Murakami's misogyny, because they have to, right? In my review, I mentioned the fact that there's one female character in this book, and she's just described as the chubby girl. And that is Murakami's choice to have one character in his book, an underage teenage girl who he describes as the chubby girl. He has created this character. Where did the light go? And he's decided to label her thusly. And one person in the comments said, I have to admit you're right. They're being, they're being sarcastic. There's never been a girl who's chubby. I've never noticed a girl who might be overweight. Clever person. I find this interesting for two reasons. One, their sarcasm misses the point that he has created this fictional character, as I said, and he has made the choice to be misogynistic towards a female character he made. And two, through their sarcasm, they are trying to defend Murakami, who doesn't need to be defended. He is a rich and famous man. And I often find that rich and famous men, and JK Rowling, have the strongest, most ardent defenders. Why? Why are you defending the powerful? So this person's sarcasm is shit. That's fine, I like sarcasm. But I also think they're doing a disservice to their own intelligence here. Because sarcasm in this fashion can be used as a means to play ignorant. If you really take a second to think about why this misogyny is bad, and how obviously it's bad, you wouldn't waste your time with a comment like this. You are choosing to be ignorant, and naive, to make a point. To dig your heels in and defend someone that you've insisted is unproblematic. Anyway, I'm not going to spend any more time on this comment because I've got way worse ones to go to. This one comes from the same video and it's, oh, it's just funny. This is my favourite Murakami book and the only one I've read twice. I think you're going to like 1Q84. That's a really great one too. And I feel that many people who say he never writes good female characters haven't read that one. <laughs> uh, uh. This next one comes from my 1Q84 video, as do all of the others. But this one actually has a lot to dig into. First of all, this guy says, Sorry, what's the problem with vision and personal writing style with misogyny and sex? Nothing. Inherently. As long as you're doing so to make a point. Not just be misogynistic. One of the big problems with Murakami, from where I'm standing, is the fact that he is passively misogynistic. His misogyny in his books, again from my perspective, is something that just seems to exist as part of his text, as a matter of fact. He's not doing any introspection. He's not stopping to consider the misogyny in his works. It just exists. It betrays a male gaze, and worse, male privilege. He's not considering the fact that perhaps his writing is problematic, that perhaps it is cruel towards women. Again, this is just my perspective. So exploring misogyny and sex in literature is grand, but that's not what he's doing. Do we really want politically correct books to not be surprising anymore? And to not find anything new blocked by right people thought? I take a personal issue with a comment like that one because I read a lot of very punk and subversive literature, stuff that shocks and upsets. And I think this is perhaps the strongest point that I want to make here in this video, is that as far as I can tell, the men who love the misogyny from writers like Murakami often take issue with shocking, punk, subversive literature from women and queer people. They like it when men are being misogynistic, but they don't like it when women write disgusting sex or queer people write difficult scenes and explore misogyny. 
they don't seem to see it as a non-male's place to do that. This is something that bugs me. Men love Murakami and think he's being daring. They don't like it when women are daring. There is an irony that completely escapes them. So when this guy says that there is right people thought and Murakami is brave for not following those lines, I don't think those lines exist because I read a lot of shocking and subversive literature by trans people, by feminists, by queer and minority groups. These people write really frightening and unsettling things that shock people to make a specific political point. And I love those works of literature the most. Murakami doesn't do any of that. He's not being clever or brave or breaking away from the status quo. He's not daring and dangerous. He's a bloke. He's just a man exercising his male privilege. Then this person says, are you an editor? No. So I don't think you can judge them so easily. Now, I think the implication here is that anyone who isn't an editor cannot judge the length of a text or the quality of a text. That's ridiculous. I feel like I don't need to explain that. It should be everyone's instinct to go, that's ridiculous. But also, I am an editor. I run a website where we have writers who submit writing to us, and I edit it. So I am an editor. <laughs> this one's from an anime profile picture, and it's a little bit gross because it's from what I'm assuming is a man, and one of those men who often use the word females a little bit too much, and it's really creepy. And also one of those men, again, who uses big long words to try to sound like they're Ben Shapiro and they're making good arguments, but really they're not. It's all hollow and empty. So, one cannot... One. One cannot write about a young female's sex life if one is an older male. You've got the male, the female, the one. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm gonna put this in a museum. Does it automatically translate to a personal sex fantasy? Yeah? Yeah, usually yeah. Are you saying that no girl ever had that experience? Would the same segments work if they were written by a young woman? Well, they would be different. They would have a different point of view, a different gaze. That's the point. He's exercising the male gaze, male privilege. What kind of woman could he write that would be okay? I'm just gonna remind you that in 1Q84, there's a bit where a woman checks that she is still herself by squeezing her boobs. Murakami hasn't met a woman. <laughs> is it at all possible to write a real person in fiction? So this person thinks they're clever. They're not clever. <laughs> Would it be better if he wrote female characters that did not have a sexual nature? No. No, not necessarily. He can write about fucking all fucking day. Just have a clue. <laughs> and then the best thing. Are female writers and creators allowed to project their sexuality onto their work? Yes. I'm glad we cleared that up. The comments so far that I've talked about have been ones that have tried to criticize my criticism. Fair enough. They haven't done a good job, but fair enough. Occasionally there will be people who just kind of come for me personally, even if it's in a very subtle way like this one here. And again, I think that's interesting because it's these men who feel the need to defend Murakami, who is a rich and powerful man who doesn't need to be defended. And this one said, if the length of a book offends you, that might speak to a bigger problem that you've got going on. Which could imply that I have ADHD, which I do, or I'm dyslexic, or something else. It's subtly ableist, and I think that that is dreadful. But I think it's also kind of clever how subtle it is. It's like, it's a really subtle comment. This person hasn't said anything explicitly mean or ableist. But it's there. You can feel it, I can feel it. Subtle ableism is the most common form, but it's another anime profile picture, so. This one kind of made me sad a little bit. They said, it occurred to me when I read this that people might find the book disturbing. It's not disturbing. I like disturbing books. 1Q84 isn't disturbing. It's embarrassing. It's cringe. It's lazy. It's misogynistic. It's not disturbing. I'm not disturbed. I love disturbing books. I don't really mind. I find his remarks about bodies funny and stupidly carefree. That's the problem though, they're too carefree. Not really considering anything. But also, good sex in books? Where? When? Never heard of such a thing. Babe, there's really good sex in a lot of books. There's a lot of good sex in books. But also, I like bad sex in books. 
I love authors writing bad sex. Melissa Broder does it better than anyone. Bad sex in books is fantastic. There's something very liberating about bad sex in books. But it's almost always written by women and queer authors who seem to have a much greater grasp on what makes good or bad sex than cishet men do. Bad sex is satisfying to read in a novel, because sex is a wonderfully diverse thing, and having bad sex is really fun. When you have a bad sexual encounter with a partner that you're connected with on an emotional level, it's a laugh. Murakami's sex is not bad in that way, though. It's just a disgusting male gaze approach to sexualization of his poor innocent female characters. It's lazy and it's gross. Bad sex, all day long, bring on the bad sex. Let's not have the Murakami sex. This one is vague. <laughs> My perspective towards this novel is the polar opposite of what is being presented in this video. I've read this novel like five times and it's a good one. Read it with an open mind. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Read it with an open mind. I did. I read everything with an open mind. I... <laughs> what? Oh. What does that mean? Read it with an open mind. Let's say I didn't. And then I do. What happens next? What happens when I still come to the same conclusion? What happens then? Read it with an open mind doesn't mean anything. Okay, so this one misgenders me. Grand. I think this dude, no, is absolutely of, I think he meant off, in his review, no. If you can't read anything with any misogyny, racism, or anything that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, you shouldn't read books at all. Now, I can see where this person is coming from to some extent. There are things that make you uncomfortable in art that are still worthy of being explored, contested, examined, criticized, and just thought about. Maybe not enjoyed? That's probably the wrong word. I think that he has a point, but I don't think you can say you shouldn't read books at all if you can't handle racism and misogyny. That makes it sound like this person enjoys those things. That's taking it too far. Literature that is problematic and naive, which racist and misogynistic literature is, is still worthy of exploration and criticism. That's not what this person is talking about. This person probably wants an excuse to continue to read things that are misogynistic and, as he reveals, racist. Oh dear. This is another one where the person thinks they're being clever and they're not clever. Don't get me wrong, but I think you're judging Murakami's biases with your own biases. That doesn't mean- it, that doesn't- that is a useless argument. Because how am I supposed- to, how am I supposed to argue against that exactly? It doesn't mean anything. That is an empty argument. We all have biases, sure, because we all have faiths and beliefs, opinions. We all come at things from different perspectives and angles and cultural backgrounds. That's a useless argument. If Murakami grew up in a society, or has decided, based on his upbringing, that misogyny is A-OK -okay and not something he should ever think about while he's writing, fine. Then I come along and I read his books and I say they're misogynistic. Also fine. What happens now? This is a useless argument. What happens now? I swear, sometimes people make comments like this and it's just like, well, what, okay, what now? It's just a dead-end street. This one's great. This is the last one. I was settling into what I hoped would be a rational criticism of 1Q84 until you started using terminology such as simps. That language one should be ashamed of using. And frankly, it's hard to take what you have to say later seriously at all. You hung your s hanged yourself before you even started. Murakami has simps. That's it. <laughs> In the video about 1Q84, I said that I'm sure that a lot of Murakami's simps are going to come for me in the comments. They did, that's why I'm here. Because they simp for him. So... Also, if I really wanted to make an argument against this person, I would actually say that there's an element of classism here. A person's criticism shouldn't be thrown out because they use language that you don't like. That feels kind of classist. If you read or watched a criticism from someone who used language that you don't approve of, it doesn't do anything to make their argument meaningless. But I'm clutching at straws here. I do think that there's an argument to be made that there's some kind of classism going on here. How dare you use language like simps? Now your argument is null and void. But it's not though, is it? I'm not saying this person's being classist towards me at all. I made a choice to use a word offhandedly while making an unscripted video, and now my argument is being thrown out. That's not fair. All right, that's it. 
I read out some comments. As I said at the beginning of the video, my fan base, my viewership, my commenters, my readers, they're all great. They're brilliant. I have a wonderful Patreon community. I have great commenters coming into my videos every single day. I love them to bits. And then sometimes an angry Murakami fan accidentally wanders in and gets lost and says something angry. And I have to deal with it. And I want them to go away, you know, like a lost sheep. Go, go, go away. And then they do. And then I have peace. And then I can have interesting conversations with intelligent readers again. Anyway, I'm very grateful. Very grateful to my community. I love my channel. I love what I do. I love the people who visit it. Except for the Murakami <laughs> simps. Ah, <laughs> uh, subscribe for books.